This is your first feature. Thank you me. have directed episodes of Servant, though, and yes. I know you were second unit director yes. on Knock at the Cabin and Old, yes. and I kind of wanted to ask about that process. Yeah. When you're working on those films in that capacity, what is it like picking the scenes or the moments that you direct, and are there any particular ones that you found influencing your work here most? Well, I think the second unit experience for me was a really um, kind of like peaceful, wonderful experience because it was very much um, on those movies of my dad. He would sort of say, okay, we have these hundred shots that like I can't get in my day. I need you to go get them. And it was very much uh, me kind of yeah figuring out the logistics and, and trying to sort of accomplish his vision, which I really enjoyed that process of sort of figuring out the pieces to to kind of suit someone else's uh, perspective. Um, and it was uh, wonderful. I think the, particularly on old, he shot on film, and that was a really precious, precious thing for me that I'd never done before um, and taught me kind of like a way of, of uh, thinking about things with precision and um, preparation. So I really enjoyed both those experiences. So you lean into kind of fulfilling his vision on those yes. movies. Yeah. Now it's your vision yes. and your vision alone. Well, not alone because it's based <laughs> on a book, of yes. course. Yeah. But during this process, did you discover anything new about your own voice as a director that you think you'll embrace more going forward? Absolutely. I mean, I think for me, it's always sort of been a struggle to determine how do I uh, behave on set and sort of control the chaos of the environment but maintain those morals that I protect, which are sort of uh, keeping it chill the whole time, like treating everyone with kindness, like all ho holding everyone to that standard of treating e each other with grace and kindness. Um, and I think in like many ways the industry is not geared towards that thing. It can be like, I don't know if you experience Which is that so as well. backwards, like those so are the weird. essential pillars yeah. that should be present on any set Absolutely. without question. <laughs> Um, and I think it's also like a, a female thing as well. And I do um, have this belief that I think we're gonna have this like whole new generation of filmmakers that do it differently. Um, so it was very much about that, sort of mm -hmm. like finding out how you can still maintain, yeah, the precision of your art form, mm -hmm. but keeping it all uh, very healthy and happy. I like hearing that that's a priority for Thank you. you. <laughs> One particular thing that caught my eye in our press notes that, that your dad said, because I tend to get really fascinated by the idea that like one specific thing could look different when a different filmmaker is executing it. Absolutely. And one of his quotes was, if this were my movie, my bunker would be different. So it just made me curious, <laughs> oh, just for fun, did you two ever discuss like what your different versions of the bunker would look like? No, I actually have never heard what his bunker is, would look like. I got very that's, curious that's about that. so funny. Um, but that is that is kind of like the wonder, I think, of, of the art making process is that it was just sort of what I had imagined when I read the book. And then it was pretty immediately, like I just put those those visionings into the film mm -hmm. format and started talking to my production designer about them. Um, but that's the wonderful thing about it, I think, is that like all the artists who come together have their own sense of visuals and their own kind of creative playing field, and it ends up creating this very singular, unrepeatable mm -hmm. thing. I love that thought, and also I get obsessed with the idea of like, what if a movie had a role swap? And yeah. Again with oh, people really swapping roles. That's really interesting. This is, this is what I lay awake at night <laughs> thinking about and trying to fantasize yeah, into doing. fruition. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if the creatures yes. went through a similar creative process. Process yeah. for you, what would you say is the biggest difference between like the first draft yes. you and your team came up with in terms of how they look and yeah. then how they look in the finished film? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a the VFX world is such a kind of crazy thing, um, and to sort of learn how you can kind of take a two D thing. So we sort of had yeah sketches first, and I had like a lot of inspiration photos and references that I brought to it, and how to sort of manifest that into something that can move and and have a presence uh, was a really kind of like winding process for us all and, and took quite a lot of time. So it was very much um, almost like a sort of return to what those initial sketches looked like at the very end of the day, but then felt quite real. What was it like for you figuring out how much to show of them and when? Because mm -hmm. that feels like the make or break thing with Absolutely. a movie that includes a creature. And I found like your choices in that respect very effective. Thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, yeah, for me, the kind of exciting thing about doing this kind of creature feature was the idea of restraint and mm -hmm. that I'm sort of, 
uh, I love that experience of uh, being a viewer and sort of hearing about something but not being able to see it. I think there's some, there's kind of a, a cool thing there of, of uh, pushing you as much as you can and sort of playing with the fact that you don't really get to see uh, mm -hmm. the villain. Especially when you have such good sound design. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, it like rattled oh, me awesome. to my core awesome. last night. I, so appreci I appreciated that. that quite a bit. Thank you. I tend to get a little obsessed with like, backstory and rules. So I am curious, what kind of work in that respect did you do in terms of like how your creatures operate and mm -hmm. how the forest operates and, and where the limitations need to lie with that? Absolutely. I mean, I think for me sort of playing in this like fantasy horror space, uh, my approach is basically that uh, everything has to be real. So there has to be some sort of logical way to understand anything um, surreal that's happening. So it was very much about uh, thinking about like the literal mythology and folklore that's embedded into the movie and how from those words that were written to today, we could, uh, this thing could exist and we could, and what would they look like today and what it would feel like. Mm -hmm. So it's very much that kind of like, that's what I sit awake stewing at night about. I'm like, oh, how could this thing, <laughs> yeah, what would this thing feel like and eat and sound like? So it's very, that's just a, a joyous process for me. I think about that stuff all day long. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, it's so wonderful. Congratulations, Thank I you. cannot wait to see even more from you because I know you. we will get more movies. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.